Hello, I'm Steve and this is Jim. Jim, would you give us an introduction of who you are? And Absolutely, be happy to. My name is Jim Newkirk and I'm a uh, uh, Audi Volkswagen technician here at Identifix. And uh, I've been working uh, in the industry as an Audi Volkswagen technician all the way from 1976, so that dates me a little bit. But uh, uh, enjoy working on the vehicles and I, I think we're going to show you some stuff tonight that's going to be extremely helpful for you uh, in your day-to-day -day work on Volkswagens. And I'm Steve Zach. I've been with Bosch as a technical instructor for 21 years and an automotive technician almost all my life, my adult life that is. This is our 15th webinar. Of that, um, this is our second one for the Genesis Touch. We have had 10,000 people view the last webinar. That means you must like what we're doing and we're glad you're coming back to visit us. So come back anytime and you can look at these on YouTube. Now let's just talk about a couple things. We're going to tell you uh, what we're going to do tonight. We're going to show you some basic setting tests with VW and special tests with General Motors, or Ford, and Nissan, and Infiniti. So the vehicles that we did tonight are 2006 Toyota Prius. We did tire pressure monitor registration. We did zero point calibration. And we're going to show you using data stream how to check the battery pack to see if the batteries are good or bad. Then we also did on a 2008 Infiniti G35, we did the idle volume air relearn. Now that's a very difficult test, so we showed you that in very good detail. And we also, on a, on a 2010 Ford F-150, we did the battery monitor relearn, the battery registration, the one that you can also do on BMW. And that test you want to pay close attention to as well because there's some very specific things I covered there. Jim, what did you do with that VW? Well, we had a 2006 Volkswagen Passat equipped with electronic parking brake, and I'm going to actually go through two sections of this. Uh, the first part, we're going to talk about basic settings and how you actually search for basic settings in the Genesis tool uh, and, and with the connection to Identifix. So how to get the, the specific information you need to perform basic settings. Then we're going to move into the specific basic settings for performing service on the electronic parking brake. And this is a, a significantly more complex set of basic settings that have to be followed in an exact order to make sure that everything works right. So I think uh, once, once we're done here, you're going to be very clear on exactly what's happening. Uh, and I think uh, you're going to find this uh, extremely useful. And our last vehicle is a 2012 Nissan Rogue with a slight misfire under minor load. Now the weird part about that is it was a very, very small misfire. So I'm going to show you how to use a little bit of data stream, a little bit of mode 6. But more than anything, I'm going to show you how to use the scope to determine if it was a coil or if it was an injector. Once again, it was a minor issue. So you're going to just get a basic idea of how I did the diagnostics. But at the same time, I'm also going to show you how to use another particular function in our tool called the micro videos to teach you how to test something using data stream. Well, before we go back to the video, one of the most key important things is we show you how to look up things on Identifix, not necessarily the fault code, but in the diagnostic information section. So we paid close attention to showing you how to use Identifix in better detail than we ever did in the past. So well, any time, let's go out to the video and look at what we did. Hello, I'm Steve Zach, Bosch Technical Instructor. For our first vehicle, we have a 2006 Toyota Prius. We're going to do three separate tests on this particular vehicle. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to look at data stream on the hybrid battery to determine if I may have a possible battery problem. And in the second portion of the test, I'm going to show you how to do tire pressure registration. And in the third test, we're going to do zero point calibration for steering, steering angle inclination. So let's go ahead and start with our actual first test, which will be the hybrid battery system. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the hybrid battery controller, and in a moment up will come our scan diagnostics portion of the test. But before I do anything, I want to go to our Identifix and I want to try to find what available repair information I might have for battery on this particular vehicle. To do that, to get to Identifix, I'll tap on diagnostic information. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap on direct hit. When I tap on direct hit, in a few seconds, it'll go directly out to the internet to Identifix website. And at that point in time, I'm going to go ahead and tap in battery and we're going to look at what's available. So I'm going to go to our search box. I'm going to tap on my keyboard. We'll tap in battery. And I'm going to close out my keyboard. And I'm going to tap on search and we're going to let us search for all the repair, available repair information for battery and the hybrid system. In a moment up will come a whole list of available bits of repair information. You'll see everything from wiring diagrams to technical service bulletins to hotline archives to specifications 
diagnostic trouble codes information, et cetera. So let's let it come up. And now I'm going to go ahead and tap on where it says diagnostic tool information. And I want to go ahead and look at my scan data to get some information about my data stream for the hybrid system. It's loading my data right now. And we're going to scroll through looking for whatever available repair information there is for the battery. We're going to see what kind of specifications we can find. So we'll notice that right now it tells us what the battery block voltage is and it also tells us how many actual battery blocks there are. So I'm going to close out of my identifix information. I'm going to hit done and then we're going to go to data stream. When my data stream comes up, I'm going to go look for my battery blocks and then we're going to look at what their voltages are and we'll talk about what to look for. So I'll tap on data stream and up comes my data stream. Now we're going to head and scroll up until we find the battery blocks and you'll notice when I see that we'll come up with all 14 of them and as you look right now, I have V01 all the way down to V14. There are 14 blocks there. And if you look, you'll notice that my battery voltage on each one of those is somewhere around 15 volts. Each one of those battery block voltages should be within one half of a volt of each other. If it's greater than a half a volt, it will probably set a fault code. So let's look at each one of those. You'll notice that I got anywhere from 15.25 and 23 all the way down to 15.30. So I'm less than a half a volt, so we know that our battery is in fairly good shape. Let's go ahead and move on to our next test, which is tire pressure registration. On the second portion of the Toyota system, we're going to look at tire pressure registration. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that we have our TPR in hand. This is what we need to do that. Our TPR is Bluetooth to the handset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what you can do. Tire pressure registration, tire pressure monitor registration is available in two locations, under maintenance tests and it's also located under tire pressure monitor. I'm going to use maintenance tests. When I tap on maintenance tests, you'll see that I have located there TPMS registration. Before I do anything, I'm going to turn my TPR on. To do that, I'll hit the select button, which is the model button in the middle. In a moment, it'll turn on and when it does, I'm going to go ahead and select Bluetooth. So I'm going to scroll down and down and there's Bluetooth. I'll hit the select button. Now I got standard BT. When I hit select, it's ready to go. Now I'm going to tap on TPMS registration on my touch. And in a moment, it's going to ask me to go ahead and do tire pressure sensor registration. It's going to go out and search for my Bluetooth hand TPR. I'll tap on yes. It's now searching for the TPR. The Bluetooth is now talking or trying to, to register to one another. And while it's doing that, it'll ask you for the serial number, which is on the back of the TPR. You'll notice I got a serial number of the TPR at 528241. It's still searching. You'll notice now it came up and found my TPR. It now says TPR 528241, which is the exact same device. So I'll tap on that. And now I'll come up my test data. It now tells me what data it's going to go looking for and it tells me to go down to read the left front. So I'm going to go down to the, to the valve stem, I'm going to press the select button at read left front, it's searching for it, it found it, it now tells me to go to read the right front. I'll go down to that tire valve, I'll press the select button, it's searching, it found it, it now tells me to go to the right rear. I'm going to go ahead and down to that valve stem and press the select button. It found it. It now tells me to go to the left rear. So now I'm going to go back over to the left rear of the vehicle and I'll go down to that valve stem and I'll press my select button and it found it. Now I don't want to do the spare so if you look it asks me do you want to do the spare. I'm going to scroll down until I find the word or the letter N which is no because I don't really want to do that. And now the process is completed. If you come back to your scan tool, you'll see that I've got all my tires listed. It gives me the ID number of my tire pressure sensor, my actual ID numbers of each one. It'll tell me my tire pressure and it'll tell me what the temperature of the tire is. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and complete the process. To do that, I'll hit continue. And now it says the tires are now registered. I'm going to hit continue. And the test is now complete. So we're going to move on to our third scenario. Our final portion of the Toyota scenario is to do zero point calibration. Now that's available in two locations on the controller page. It's located on the ABS controller and it's also located under maintenance tests. The reason for doing zero point calibration is if I replace my yaw rate sensor or my ABS module. I'm going to show you how to do it on maintenance tests because this is a two step procedure and you'll notice something that's really unique with the tool. I'm going to tap on maintenance tests. I'll tap on steering service. And then I'm going to tap on zero point calibration test mode. And now it's going to come up and it's going to give us a set of instructions. It tells us the reason for doing it is because we replaced the yaw rate sensor or we replaced the ABS module. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And now it tells you that we got to do the memory reset test first. I told you this was a two test, two part test procedure. So it's going to drive us right to test reset memory and I'm going to tap on continue. All right. The vehicle must be in a level surface, which it is. I've already checked that. I'll tap on continue again. It says now press shift lever into park. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll tap on continue. It tells me that the ignition should be on the engine off, which it is. I'll tap on continue again. Now it says our calibration is complete. We make, want to make sure that the light is flashing, so I'm going to go check it on the dashboard. And we are, so I'll go ahead and hit continue. Now we've completed our tests on the Toyota, we'll move on to our next car. As you can see behind me is a 2011 Ford F-150. I'm going to show you how to do battery registration. But let me talk a little bit about what you're doing and why. Many Fords and many BMWs have a new charging system where they actually do a load test on the battery with the key on in the off position, engine off, and or in the accessory position, and it actually measures the battery state of load. As long as that key is in the on position and the engine's not running, and or in the accessory position, what it's looking for is to see what the battery state of charge is. If that battery state of charge is less than 45% of the battery, then what it will do is the car's controller will automatically turn off the, any accessory like the radio and the GPS system to conserve battery energy. If you ever charge the battery and you hook up your charger to the negative side of the battery, you will have to do what's known as battery registration. Or if you replace the battery, you'll also have to do a battery registration. Two things to keep in mind whenever testing a battery or charging a battery on a BMW or a Ford with what's known as load shed charging tests or load shed charging, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you hook up your negative battery cable of the battery charger to the block ground or chassis ground. Don't hook to the negative side of the battery. That'll protect you so you don't have to ever go ahead and do the relearn for any unknown reason. Now, to do that, you'll find most of your battery relearn conditions are listed under body control module. So I'm going to go set up for that. I'm going to tap on body control module. When I do, in a moment, it will come up and it will set the controller, the scan tool, so that we can do our tests. Now, that actual test is located under special tests. So I'm going to tap on special tests. And in a moment, you'll notice that I have a full list available. And that list shows you that I've got battery monitor system. So I'll tap on it. And now I'm going to go to where it says battery monitor system reset. And in a moment, it will come up with a warning screen telling me to turn the key on, which I've already done. I'll tap on continue. And then it tells me this test results the battery monitoring system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue again. And it tells you to perform this test if I ever replace the battery and or I recharge the battery by hooking it up to the negative side of the cable. Or if I replace the BACM control module. I hit continue. Its test is completed and now we're successful and we're finished. A very simple test to do. But remember, whenever you charge the battery or any time in which I replace the battery, I'm going to have to redo this mon battery monitoring test. If I'm going to charge the battery, it's always best to hook up your negative side of your battery charger to block ground or chassis ground. That'll prevent, for, prevent you ever having to do this ever for any other unknown reason. The only reason you should really do this is if I replace the battery. 
So thank you, and we're going to move on to our next card.